So we're back and uh, continuing our discussion of the major selling idea, the search for the MSI. You know, these are just some common approaches that, you know, you can, again, put in your toolbox, if you will, and take out as necessary. We talked about positioning, and I would refer you to go back to the lecture that we talked about the various positioning approaches. Uh, and now we're on unique selling proposition. And again, this is the, you know, the idea that your advertisement should focus on this one claim that you're making that's so strong and powerful and ideally unique to your brand. If it's not unique to your brand, you can't really say it's a unique selling proposition, right? Um, the USP uh, is a very powerful approach, but it's it's not applicable in all situations because not every brand really has a, a USP and can rely on it. But if you've got it, then by all means use it. Uh, let me try to show some examples. Like, for example, here's one from Schick. Schick is a Gillette competitor. So Schick Tracer, uh, this was a magazine I had a while back. At last, close coverage. Tracer is the only razor with twin blades that flex. It traces every curve on your face to put more blade edge against your skin. And here, you know, you see them shaving a basketball to, you know, to kind of illustrate. So the key thing is, Tracer is the only razor with twin blades that flex. That's a USP. And when Mach 3 came out, you know, you may not realize this. Maybe you guys are too young, but, you know, this was a revolution when Mach 3 came out. I remember the first time I tried it, I was just amazed. You know, one of my fraternity brothers were shaving and... In, in the uh, in the bathroom side by side, and this guy's like, "Hey, did you see this thing?" And I'm like, "What is that?" And, oh, he's like, "Oh, you got to try it." And I'm like, "Yeah, come on, it's just a razor," but it was like you know revolutionary. So here they're using that USP, introducing Gillette Mach Three, the first triple blade razor for the closest shave ever in fewer strokes with less irritation. That's you know pretty strong. And USP and it and it actually uh, it was true for quite a while it was a USP but the danger of a USP is that you know your competitors aren't standing still and they may in fact pull the rug out from under you you know at, at Sutash our fruit yogurt uh, we if you remember I had, I had talked about I think the research that showed that you know, the major choice criteria for consumers was, you know, Fazla, Meve, Orana, Olmasa, you know, is the, the fruit, yogurt, you know, the yogurt should have um, a lot of, you know, a high ratio of fruit, you know, the fruit filling, the fruit content. And as it turned out, in analyzing our, ourselves against competitors, we did indeed have the highest fruit content of all the competitors and we actually had a great great tasting fruit yogurt um, so i had initially thought to say well let's use that as a usp but you know in in after thinking about it more it was like well wait a minute if we say we're the you know the 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 fruit yogurt with the most fruit what happens in a few months or a year when another competitor says hey now we have the you know highest ratio even if they increase it by 0.1% they can still say that so it it's not a very long term position is it uh so you know instead we just said something like bowl bowl mavili you know lots and lots of fruit which is a great position and it worked so um, after Gillette came out with his Mach 3, uh-oh, Schick came out with the Quattro, four blades. That's incredible, four blades. 
I'm not sure how much better it is, but there there goes uh, you know the three blade USP, and as if that's not enough, can you imagine? Oh, by the way, the onion. You know the onion. It's kind of like Zeitung in Turkey, um, but it was. This used to be actually a, a magazine, a newspaper, a hard copy newspaper that originated in Boulder, Colorado. I remember getting it when I was in Boulder for the first time, seeing it, and, and back before it was on the internet, it was actually a hard copy newspaper, but it's it's satire. And here in 2004, okay, February 2004, The Onion had an article by the supposed CEO and president of Gillette. He says, F everything, we're doing five blades. Would someone tell me how this happened? We were the effing vanguard of shaving in this country. The Gillette Mach 3 was the razor to own. Then the other guy came out with a three-blade razor. Were we scared? Hell no, because we hit back with a little thing called the Mach 3 Turbo. That's three blades and an aloe strip for moisture. But you know what happened next? Shut up, I'm telling you what happened. The bastards went to four blades. Now we're standing around with our <clears throat> in our hands selling three blades in a strip. Moisture or no, suddenly we're the chumps. Well, F it, we're going to five blades. All right, so listen. This was in February 2004, right? And it's satire, it's a joke. But what happened? After Schick came out with four blades, bang, Gillette Fusion, Fusion Power. Fusion, count how many blades are there. Five. Can you believe it? The onion predicted the future. Gillette Fusion Power Five Blades. Now, do you think it stops there? What do you think? Can it possibly, can you, can you possibly go six blades? Well, that's kind of a joke, right? But would you believe it? This company called Dorco USA, count them. Those are six blades, my friends. Incredible. The race for blades never stops. It's like, you know, uh, it's like the Cold War. Six blades, six blades, six blades. Everybody's got six blades. Incredible. And look at that, the Gillette 9000. <laughs> no, it's a joke. But seriously, it could happen, eh? Who knows? So the idea, again, is a USP is great if you have it. But you have to be a bit careful. Be damn sure that you are the only one with this USP and that you're the only one that can have it and maintain it. There's also brand image. Now, brand image doesn't just mean, you know, the brand identity, but it's actually a, an approach to establishing a creative, you know, it's the creative approach, you know, it's the um, major selling idea or the big idea behind an advertisement and you know brand image um, it's a bit different uh, than what we've talked about before because before we're telling you know more or less a logical you know reasons to buy right the unique selling proposition you should buy this razor because it does this but with brand image you know it's it's just more or less establishing uh, some symbolic identity or some you know, hard to describe feeling, right? Like here, Levi's 501 jeans, what are they trying to establish? Maybe some type of, you know, cool, you know, guy on his, looks like a Harley, but, you know, in the oil fields of Texas with a hot girl standing there looking at him, you know, that's, that's Levi's 501s. Or maybe this, Jim Rickey. I think it's a brand of uh, shoes, you know, kind of skateboarder shoes, if I'm not mistaken. But it's a bit more stylish. But that kind of, you know, not mainstream. But here, you know, it kind of looks almost like a video game. Um, but really, is there any... You know, what's the brand image? Maybe the brand image. What would you say is this brand image that they're going for? A little bit different, unique, stylish, urban, cool, interesting. You know, if we look at it without that those words, we can kind of get a better feel. Or here, here's another one.
Do you get anything from this ad? Kind of interesting, right? Kind of just, it's not saying these are the shoes that you should wear, you know, when you're doing anything. It's just kind of trying to give an impression that this is an interesting, cool, um, unique, modern, I don't know, dynamic kind of a, of a shoe. Here we've got Dior, you know, Midnight Poison. And you can see the Midnight Poison, kind of dark, brooding, you know, in, um, what's the word? Not illustrious, but uh, um, no, nah, I can't think of the word. My my English has gotten so bad. But you get the idea, right? You don't really have to put it into words. Just looking at it gives you this impression of what the brand image is. Um, ah, here's Nina Ritchie discovering the new mischievous fragrance, right? She's so mischievous. She's like a kitty cat sitting on the, you know, what is that, top of the building, wrapped up in little pink ribbons. Look how mysterious and mischievous she is with her little cat ears. There you go, right? Brand image. So, you know, if you contrast this with this, right, quite a different image. Obviously still going for, you know, uh, some luxury brand approach, right, but quite different in their kind of the feeling that they give you. And that's what brand image is all about. What about this brand image? Marlboro. That's, what is that? Is that brand image? Well, Marlboro actually started off as, you know, a woman's cigarette. Did you know that? It was originally introduced as a woman's cigarette in 1924 uh, because it was a filtered cigarette, you know, and, and I'm not sure if these were filtered or not. Maybe not. Um... So uh, it, it was positioned, yeah, maybe that is positioned as a women's, yeah, it was positioned as a women's cigarette. Um, yeah, look, gee, mommy, you sure enjoy your Marlboro. Before you scold me, mom, maybe you'd better light up a Marlboro. Yes, you need never feel over-smoked. That's the miracle of Marlboro. Gee, mommy, you sure enjoy your Marlboro. Yeah, so, um, but what happened? Well, they kind of changed because now they kind of uh, were going after a male market, right? Trying to expand the, the brand's um, usage that, you know, to try to make it so that not just women would smoke it, but men would also. So this, you know, Marlboro Man image was created by Leo Burnett, back in 1954 and they tried out you know different kind of masculine identities um, sea captain you know airline pilot you know dominant man and you can see like the, the sort of submissive women in these images and uh, so they, they had this, you know, Marlboro Man campaign, where there's a man, there's a Marlboro. But kind of randomly almost, one of the images got stuck with Marlboro, and it kind of made a big impact. And uh, you can probably guess which image that is, right? You know, the Marlboro Man. Um, no, not him. Can you guess, you remember what the Marlboro Man looks like? Yes. And we have it here as the cowboy. That's what Marlboro is now associated with. The Marlboro Man is this kind of rough and tough cowboy. Little known fact though, three of the Marlboro Men died of cancer. Cigarettes actually kill you uh, more than the coronavirus can. You should be more scared of cigarettes. So I'll join you in a few seconds.